This is a follow-up to the first video on, or the previous video, I should say, which was on the uh, bank switched scrolling, which was a way to optimize scrolling time, um, or raster time rather, for the layer one scroller, the layer one being the mountains, layer two being the foothills here, layer three being the um, this uh, forest, and layer one being the foreground. The foreground is a full color scroll, the rest are, are not, they're just character scrolls. And then her the color right across. Um, so, so just before I start, uh, same comments as before about some, some of these color issues. Um, the color of the, 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 f the fuselage or the body of the plane uh, it's just an indicator for me during development. It's got nothing to do with the finished game. It won't be there in the finished game. It's just so that I know the forward air speed for my various tests that I, I perform. And this little f uh, split or flicker here in the airspace indicator again, that's just an artifact of these visualizations in the in the border. It's not. It's not a. <laughs> it's not a bad programming or anything like that. So. <coughs> Right, with that, with that out, out of the way, yes, so previously I had described how we used um, double buffering or bank switch scrolling, whichever way you want to describe it, to reduce the raster time to scroll layer one from, it was something of the order of 40 pixels down to, s uh, sorry, raster lines or pixels deep, whichever way you want to describe it, down to something of the, uh, around about seven or eight um, raster lines deep. And that was done by spreading the heavy lifting of the software scroll across all of the um, uh, increments of the hardware scroll, which is the, you know, the smooth pixel by pixel scroll. Now that's fine for something that never scrolls faster than um, one pixel per, per frame, which is the case with the, these, uh, these mountains in layer one. However, everything else in the rest of the parallax moves faster than that. And you always have to think of the worst case scenario or, or you know, the, the highest load scenario, which in this case is full forward air speed. Um, and that translates to um, eight pixels per frame for the, the full color scroll in the foreground. So there's no opportunity. There is no, there is actually no um, pixel by pixel scroll for the layer four in the foreground when it's going that fast it, it just it's it's eight pixels per frame so as i say there's no opportunity to distribute the load of the scrolling across those um across the hardware scroll because it effectively doesn't happen the hardware scroll is just an endless software scroll um, and that's the condition that I'm, I'm actually showing here so that's that's it at full load um so it's actually split into two parts, the layer four scroll. It has the, the, the bulk of it, or sorry, the character component of it is this white um, bar here, which fills up this, this, this is a, uh, a, you could call this a raster zone, stretching from the blue d down to the, the bottom of this yellow bit. Um, <coughs> and that's where the, the panel airspace indicator and so on are located as well. So yeah, that takes um, something about around about um, around about twenty, well, twenty-two maybe raster lines deep, and then the full color component of it is is hived off. It used to be all one thing together, but it's been hived off and put up here. That's what this light green thing is along here. It's put up here. Um, so it actually happens in the next frame for now, but. That subject to change as well, but anyway, the the idea was to split that off and to have this down here, um, at least for the sake of this, <laughs> for the sake of this video, because things are always in a state of flux here as as new effects are added and and more demands are, are placed on the interrupt system. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about this thing here, which I call. Um <laughs> I call a bad frame scenario, right? And that's where we have layer two and layer three uh, software scroll happening on the same frame. So green represents, I think maybe layer two, and the dark gray represents uh, layer three. 
and, the, and that's whenever their software scrolls happen together. And even though this happens only once in a, as you'll see when I advance this frame by frame, it's not every frame, it's, um, it's I think it's every 16 from well, maybe it's not every 16 frames, no, it's every, <laughs> it looks more like every, let's count them, one, two, three, four, it looks like every four frames it happens, so yeah, that's that's pretty awful. It might as well, even if it was, because um, I, I tested it earlier, and it was one every 16, but it was at a different forward air speed, so maybe that's where I'm get, getting 16 from. But yeah, it's um, it's unacceptable. It might as well happen every frame, and that's too much. It's too deep, because there's no compelling reason why they cannot be timed so that they never happen on the same frame. And if they don't happen in the same, if they never happen in the same frame, then their effective depth is only something of the order of maybe eight to ten pixels, something like that. Which is great. That's what you want. You want to uh, make sure that um, it's as compressed as possible. Um, so the solution was to always scroll the layer three first and then when it is scrolled it raises a flag that says that it has been scrolled in that frame and then do the the checks for the layer two scroll and it only does a software scroll uh, for layer two if that flag has not been raised if the flag has been raised it then waits until the next frame and does it and this actually works pretty well um, as i'll show you in a, a moment without without any jerkiness so that's that's the you know that's the bad w way of, of doing it where where you have the, this bad frame issue right so we'll get rid of that and this is the this is the good version um, so I we'll just charge on at full speed and as you can see it never happens it's nicely timed so they never they never happen on the same frame so let me get this right right. Uh, yeah, so green, the light green represents the the layer three, which is uh, those trees, and the the grey represents the um, the foothills here. So they never happen on the same the same frame. So that's that's another that's another optimization for the scrolling um, d to save um, the amount of raster real estate used by the scrolling at full load. Um, no, just you may have noticed these uh, bars here, these little lines. Those lines are where the non maskable interrupt interjects and does its work. Now, I don't really want to talk about it in this video because it's the subject of one of the future video is all being well that I, that I plan to bring out in the very near future. I want to do an article on the non-maskable interrupt and its utility in, in games. And um, But before that I have to do an article on geo-referenced sprites which is a, a big thing for parallaxing and indeed any, any kind of game like this that, that um, is based on uh, two-directional, bi-directional scrolling where you have to track back on yourself. And also, there's parts of it, um, there's to be a gameplay video uh, that some of this is going to impact on as well, so I don't want to I don't want to spoil all that, but I'll, I'll, I can say that this is used to play the sound effects and it's also used for some sprite multiplexing. Um, and as you can see, it actually interrupts the raster interrupt so we have an interrupt interrupting an interrupt. It's the non-maskable interrupt that takes precedence over the the IRQ, and the IRQ is the basis of the, the raster interrupt. So that's that's how that works. But again, that's the subject for an, another email. I'll maybe just um, yeah, I'll just stop on that on that cliffhanger.